Hello. Uh, so the answer to the title is no. This is not the best boat for UK boat fishing. And the reason it's not is because there isn't one. Every boat is a compromise. Uh, every boat suits uh, um, pe different people are going to want uh, different boats for different needs. Different areas are going to suit uh, a boat better. So um, bearing in mind that every boat is a compromise, even your lottery boat. Don't tell me you haven't got one. I have. Um, so even your lottery boat is a compromise in uh, in, in some areas. Um, for me, uh, I'm limited by the size of boat I can have on my mooring. I want to keep the mooring, so I'm limited to 5.5 um, meters. This boat is a Warrior 175, so it sits nicely in that at um, 17 and a half feet, whatever that converts to in meters, about 5.3, I think, something like that. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, uh, Compromise-wise, this is a, a cuddy boat, which gives me shelter from the wind. Um, it hasn't got a cabin, which I, I would quite like, but then if you have a cabin, you haven't got quite so much uh, cockpit space. For winter fishing, um, we're into um, early October at the moment and I'm in a t-shirt. Winter fishing when it's cold, it'd be lovely to have a pilot house, but then I don't particularly want a pilot house in the summer and I don't want all the windage that uh, that causes when you when you drift fishing. So it's all a balance and you, you've got to find something um, that suits your needs and is of course within your budget because boats are not cheap. I sold my previous boat um, not uh, last year but late the year before that um, hoping that um, no it was last year last September time um, and then uh, hoping that the boat prices were going to drop over the winter period um, that um, didn't happen and still hasn't happened at the moment they may drop but uh, um, anyway I didn't want to go a season without a boat so I found this one it's a Warrior 175 um, it's a 2006 boat um, so that fitted in my budget uh, it's got a Honda 94 stroke on the back which uh, does the job fine um, out of choice I'd probably put a Yamaha on purely because my previous two boats had Yamahas so, and over 20 years they never let me down once uh, and I'd probably up the horsepower a little bit to maybe 115. Um, this one does absolutely fine with a 90 clean boat lightly loaded uh, and the right conditions it'll do about 25 knots 28 miles an hour there thereabouts um, but it sits really nicely at about 18 to 20 uh, which is fine I generally don't go more than about five or six miles from the mouth of the estuary um, so if it's six miles 18 knots is, is 20 minutes so um, uh, the speed is it, it is absolutely fine um, the bigger engine obviously you get uh, you get a little bit higher cruise on that but um, it's only shaving minutes off uh, where I would want to go okay so uh, I'll go from front to back so starting in the cuddy uh, we've got access to the bow and the locker which I've just got a mooring line um, a seven and a half kilo anchor if you can see it in there it's a bit dark uh, and about um, 20 foot of chain and then um, 100 meters of rope sorry I'm mixing my units up here but 100 meters of rope um, I don't uh, I don't anchor very often as you know if you watch my channel um, if I was anchoring more I wouldn't do it out of this hatch um, I'd have an Aldney ring and a bucket but um, I like to keep the cockpit as clean as possible um, so for the occasional times that I'd anchor I don't want the Aldney ring and the bucket um, cluttering up the cockpit um, looking back I haven't got a lot on the roof I don't I don't have rocket holders or anything like that I've just got the VHF a light and a solar charger In the cuddy itself, um, I don't. I'm a bit reluctant to say I don't use the cuddy because I use it every single trip as uh, as a windshield, which is why I'm out in a t-shirt rather than as, as I pass the ribs in the river, um, all dressed up in Gore-Tex. So it gets used every single day. But as somewhere to sit, uh, no, not really. Um, if I am sitting, I've got the I've got the two um, helm and co seats. Um, the igloo 
which I'll come back to in a minute, is also a really good seat. If I'm sat in it, I'm, I'm under the shelter of the uh, of the cuddy and I can still fish. Whereas the seats I haven't got, some warriors you can get um, um, a spray dodger for them, a little, uh, a little canvas tent that comes across. So the seats, um, the captain and co seats are out in the open, um, whereas the, uh, the, the igloo uh, just gets my head under the shelter if it is uh, it's raining and you can still stick a rod out and fish from it. So in the front I've got two side pouches, uh, so keep life jackets uh, at hand at that one, a more in line and um, uh, a fire extinguisher and just some odds and sods in this side, um, plates and knives and forks, um, tea and coffee if I choose to boil a kettle of water when I'm on my own there, I generally just bring a flask. Um, under this side I've got um, kettle and spare gas and under the other side I've got bits that I don't regularly use so there's a drogue in there um, extra mooring line some WD-40 gaffer tape uh, I don't carry a spare fuel can so I have got a little little jug in there so I can just transfer fuel to the auxiliary engine um, if should I need it uh, going further back then um, I've got a couple of these on board from Railblazer, so they're cup holders, but it's also handy for keeping your wallet, phone, car keys. Uh, you don't have to root around trying to find them at the end of the trip, and it keeps them safe in there. Uh, I've also got uh, another one uh, which can go into a starport, so if if, um, if we are having a picnic or something like that, then uh, um, yeah, just uh, extra cup holders are always handy. For extra storage, somebody on the uh, Warrior Facebook group put these on actually. These are just um, bathroom things from Ikea, they're really inexpensive. I've got one this side for fishing stuff, scissors, um, sunglasses, scales and spare cord, um, that sort of thing, just just general general fishing stuff that, uh, that I use. And on the other side, um, just mainly because it's a void and I don't like voids that, that don't get used really I suppose. Uh, cleaning stuff, so shampoo and spare cloths. Oh and let me show you this. 12 volt oven from uh, Amazon. So uh, I had my pasty in that today. 20 minutes or so and it, uh, and it warms it up. So that brings us on to the dash. Um, Fairly standard stuff really, just gauges and switches, uh, the VHF, battery changeover switch and, and battery isolator. Um, the solar thing I'd sort of inherited with the boat, I don't use that because it's all gone rusty, but this switch panel has got USB um, and um, 12 volt um, facilities there. The I've showed you this on my videos before, I went for um, the Raymarine Element 7, uh, it does everything I need it to do at uh, a sensible price and it's got the uh, Navionics relief shading on it which I've, I've spoken about um, plenty of times. Uh, the Igloo that I've mentioned um, is brilliant, well worth the money. Um, I have the, with those, I have, um, I just use a couple of Tupperware tubs, a couple of mackerel fillets there left from today. Um, I mainly use those because you can get decent sized fillets in them uh, and it means that uh, the igloo just needs a wipe out rather than a full fishy wash uh, and the, um, the little tubs there can go in the dishwasher. Right, uh, going further back, uh, under the deck we've got fuel under this one, 80 litres of fuel. This is supposed to be a fish hold but I don't use it, um, it's, uh, it's wet. Um, it can't be cleaned that well so I use it if we're having a family day on the water and we've got wetsuits, bingo, kneeboard that sort of thing that all fits under there nicely so that gets out of the way but I don't actually use it as a as a fish box. Um, landing net quite often surplus to requirements when I go fishing but it's nice to have it on board. Uh, the other side brush for cleaning um, and then uh, uh, a couple of buckets, obviously. These Plastimo buckets are really good. I had two of those, but uh, I lost one over the side. Um, so I've got one from my camping gear as a second bucket, just as a temporary measure until I get any, another Plastimo one. Um, 
I think that was about 14 years ago. So um, yeah, still looking for a plaster wheel bucket. Uh, this stern area, I've had the boat since uh, December. Um, it needed a lot of work doing on it. Uh, the fuel tank needed replacing, the old aluminium one was all rotten and letting fuel out into the foams, so that all needed digging out and etc. Um, the, it had previously been trailer launched and had a bit of trailer abuse on the on the hull. Lots of gel coach repairs were needed. The engine was a mess. Um, Frogmore Marine Services were absolutely brilliant. They got the engine running sweet, did the gel coat. Um, I did the fuel tank myself. Um, so um, yeah, that, that was all done before I launched it in about, um, I think it was April time. But this back area, uh, I didn't really know what to do with it. I'm still not sure how it's going to work out, but that's that's a job for this winter when I take it out of the uh, out of the water. So I've got um, the two black bins there. I have got cushions for those. So if we've got family on board, um, it's extra seating. Um, that one I just keep uh, full of fresh water. Um, it, it never hurts to have fresh water on board, uh, but also um, these boats with me, the battery, the console, everything on the starboard side, uh, a little bit of weight on the port side doesn't go amiss. Uh, and in the other one, uh, I've got um, rod holders, they've gone there when they've dried out. Um, I just keep my other stuff in there, snood, uh, winter coat, uh, the other uh, railblazer cup holder module thing. Um, and my little gas hob burner is in there, just kept in, just kept in the dry. So the rail blazer stuff I've got, um, I've got rod holders, I've got star ports, uh, one on each side, two on the back. That mounts the um, bait table, which just gets stored back there. Uh, I, I did have to put these, you can see now I've got it upside down, you can see these shims here, I just had to put in. The angle adjustment is a little bit coarse on these um, rail blazer tables. And I found when it was mounted, it was either tilted too far forward and everything would come into the boat, or it was just too steep for sensible filleting. So um, yeah, a couple of shims and, and, and they're fine. So that gives me rod holder potential if I want it, the table fits in there if I want it. Otherwise I've got the vertical rod holders that came with the boat and the um, angled rod holders, one on, one on each side. So uh, plenty really. Um, got the Honda on the back, the Yamaha as a standby and um, the um, boarding ladder. Also off the back here, because I'm on a mooring, I've got my uh, transducer on um, on a sliding mount. Uh, I can adjust it, it doesn't need adjusting. Once it's set, it's set. But it means I can take it out um, and just pop it on the transom while it's on the mooring and it doesn't get the the um uh it doesn't get the transducer full of barnacles and uh and, and not performing as it should uh what else have we got uh deck wash so we've got the uh the deck wash there that's linked to a bit of plumbing here that i've put in hopefully you can see it so <laughs> these boats are designed to have um uh um sealed um, bilges um, when it's new fine but uh, as the boat gets older um, it's inevitable that uh, water is going to find its way into the bilges so the three little plumbing levers I've got there uh, I've got a, an inlet one in the uh, fuel tank area one in the uh, in the right in the stern where it, it's going to collect um, uh, so I can I can um, pump those out via the deck wash and the other is connected to connected to a hose which has got a strainer on the end so I can chuck that over the side and then I've got a raw water deck wash or because I've got the tank here which keep fresh water in I can pop it in there and have the fresh water washed down so um, yeah that uh, allows you to keep the boat clean as um, washing with fresh water is far far better than washing with salt water uh final thing here got a little mount there so this rod holder can come out and the ski pole can go in when the kids want to play kids 21 and 26. 
and it is good fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that about rounds up the boat. It's a very good boat if anybody's thinking of it. Uh, they're very popular, which uh, um, which tells a story in itself. Uh, they take a little bit of getting used to uh, in terms of uh, trim uh, and ride. Um, the first couple of times I went out, I got absolutely soaked. Uh, normally, you would um, the normal practice is if you're going into a sea, you uh, trim down. If you've got a following sea, you trim up. They're a bit of a thug of a hole these uh, these things, and because it's got a, a blunt nose as well it keeps the nose up a little bit um, so uh, it doesn't bury itself uh, in a following sea and it does sit into the sea quite well um, I'm not going to explain the ins and outs of trim um, if you get one have a play or take someone on board who's, who's got a warrior um, trimmed right and uh, at the right speed you can get a pretty much dry ride no boat is 100% dry unless you're in a wheelhouse. Um, so uh, it's, it is gonna carry a little bit of spray, um, but trimmed right, it, it is lovely. They're, they're heavy boats. Um, I wouldn't say I would like to trailer one every day. A couple of people who know what they're doing, absolutely fine. Uh, but the, um, the penalty of a heavy boat is awkward for trailer and dry land sort of maneuvering on the water. It's, uh, it's good. It's a really, really good stable hull. It's good into the sea uh, and the horrible bit for light uh, small boats is the following sea. This has got the weight to sit there and um, and, it, and it rides the following sea really well. Uh, so yeah, um, hope you've enjoyed that uh, little run through. If I've missed anything, uh, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. See you next time.